I actually want to know from Yoda how you mm. took this young Jedi from a freshman class, probably weighing 120 soaking wet, <laughs> to like a 200 jamming Donster. Like, tell me what it was like getting this man and where he's at now. Man, oh man. <laughs> so, <laughs> I got Matt, um, I'll say, was that right after your sophomore year? Freshman, right after Fre freshman. Right after freshman year, going into that summer. And he was skinny, frail, you know what I mean? And the biggest thing that I told his parents upon meeting him was, we need to get him in the weight room. Yeah, I want to train him in basketball and all the that. The skill is there though. I want to get him in the weight room. That's going to be the difference maker. That's what's going to help his longevity in his career. That's what's going to keep him from getting injured as much. That's what's going to take him to that next level. And so, you know, got him in here. I think he made a, may have started off at about 160-ish, around that, around that weight class. Okay. And then, you know, over the years, we just put on weight gradually. But mostly we just got, we just started focusing on his body, focusing on his mechanics, focusing on his ankles, his hips, yeah. shoulders, now, those kind of things. When you're talking about ankles, I saw something uh, that we haven't done in uh, sports, but it's kind of similar when we were training. The sandbags, yes, sir. which you were making him run on or get with it, a resistance band. Yeah. And that's what I like what so you're doing. Smart. He was training you on things that are not, not yet get you bigger, but keep you healthy. Mm -hmm. What else do you do to keep him healthy in your workout? Man, we literally, we focus a lot on hips, a lot of hip stability, a lot of hip movements. We focus a lot on stretching, a lot of mobility, dynamic warm-ups. Um, we really, really harness in on those things. Wrist, hands, okay. feet, toes, those things are the those things are what separates a player. Those things are what keeps him above the rest. Training this man from then to now, what do you think his strongest part of his game is? The strongest part of his game? Mm -hmm. And of course attacking the rim. He's a slasher. He's okay. a very good slasher. He really gets to the basket, plays downhill. You get him downhill, no one can stay in front of him. Now being his trainer, what is his game that you would want him to work on more? As far it's as individual, in, just individual isolation, quick moves, quick hitters. So that, and that involves a lot of his jump shooting. Jump once, shooting? Once, once, that, once that happens, there is no stopping him. Cause you get him going downhill, you can't stop him. You put him in a half court set where he's able to watch for double teams, play with his back to the basket, square up, face up pull up threes, just transition into a high level, multi-layer score, multi-level score, I should now, say. Now what, and like I said, the only thing I can go off is, you know, playing baseball, we do a lot of hand-eye coordination and quick twitch. You did a drill today with uh, the hurdles and lights, mm -hmm. and, and with that combined, quick twitch muscles, and how does that transfer for basketball? for him to be jumping like that, making sure he finds the light at the right time, making sure, is that for passes? Is that to see the court? Is that? That's for everything. So for instance, he was in a defensive stance and so he's sliding over, he might have to get over a pick. So when he slides over and when he picks up those knees, he has to get over that screen. So if he wants to jump the screen, he has to pick up his legs. If he wants to jump over something to get a block shot, he can do that from any position on the court and then reaching down, touching, touching the lights is making sure that he's staying low the entire time. Those are the little things that you try to throw in into the training to yeah. make it very, very efficient and make it more productive. Well, the man has a great body, but the core seemed to be what was really focused on a lot for most of the exercise. Yeah, we did back, yeah, they did legs, but main thing you're saying, tighten your core, tighten your core, making sure is that seriously something that's like a main thing? If your core ain't right, oh, ain't yeah. nothing else right? Well, he gotta hold himself up. He has yeah. to be able to hold himself. He has to be able to control his body. And when you control yourself, your limbs will move however you want them to. Okay. So that's where we really focus on that. We focus on the core, get him, build his core tight. Then it allows him to get stronger everywhere else. Going into Florida State, how are you gonna train him to go on to that? Them, those are a little bigger boys. Yeah. So pretty much we've, we've put on about 17 pounds over the past year. 
yeah. I should say, and uh, we'll put on maybe another 10 to 15. So when he walks on the Florida State campus, he'll be an NBA-ready two guard. And yeah. so when I say that, I mean he should be about 6'5", about 204, 205 pounds. Okay, that's a good And weight. so that, that's where we're shooting for as of right now until it just depends on how his body holds the weight this season. Okay. And then we'll see that, and then we might put on some more going into it. And then that's going to allow him to take the hits and take all of the extra, all the extra banging that he's going to endure going now, up that level. This is a two-part question for both of y'all because he could tell you one thing, but it's doing another. Dieting. <laughs> how, how serious is his weight gain? Because like you said, bro, you're going to get banged up a lot and... There's certain sports when you get banged up and you don't have that right nutrition, you're not going to heal. And mm -hmm. that's serious. So what are you teaching him as far as food, nutrition, like, mm -hmm. hey, these are the things you got to eat. Is it more a certain amount of day or is it the type? Well, right now, we, we're trying to get him to consistently eat a lot throughout the day. Yeah, we need him to add, We need him to put that put that weight on okay. in order so that we can bring it down once the season starts and those kind of things so we trying to gain that weight so yes it's a lot of protein a lot of whey protein a lot of chicken steak heavy nice good dense protein meals that he's having we're, we're not focusing solely on a, a strict diet as far as what he eats okay. we're just focusing on how, how much, much he eats right now and how much he eats gets there then we'll start dieting down and get more so focused on what specifically he's going to eat. Now, as his trainer, are you able to tell when he's eating and not eating? Yep, sure can. <laughs> sure can. We, we just went through this. We, we started and that's, out. That's the sign of a good trainer, exactly. man. You got to pay attention that's to your saying. clients. We, we started out this month at 198, and now we just went and checked it. And now, what were you? 190. Oh, oh yeah, 190. On 190. Dang. Oh, yeah, I put it out there. Mm. I'm that trainer. I'm the trainer that's going to tell you. <laughs> Oh, I, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't keep, I'm very transparent, very transparent, now, but yeah, you he'll, he'll put that back. Now, on. you know, that's going to be important. I don't know how your living situation is going to be at college, but dude, you're going to have to learn how to cook. You're going to have to find you yeah, some yourself. people that know how to cook or something because that's, that's going to be serious. <laughs> and because I want to make sure we touch on everything, uh, especially with this company being, oh, uh, once again, 3P Athletics, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. So right here, man, at 3P Athletics, we just trying to fine tune him. He came over. He's very big time. He's a, he has a level head on. He comes in. He's ready to work. It's, a, it's very big that what we've created for him, and it's not just me. It's not just a me thing. Mm -hmm. It's a team. And that's, again, that goes back to his parents that we, that we talked about. They wanted a team. He told me from the very beginning, hey, I'm trying to get, get our team together around Matt, make sure okay. he's in a good situation where he feels comfortable with everybody. And so we have his basketball trainer in Kier. We, have, we, other, we also have some other strength things that we do with uh, P3. Okay. And then we have me, and we're all in the same kind of boat. A, vi but, a village, Bill. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it takes a village to raise a star athlete. So we're all here for him. He's very... Uh, knowledgeable about what each one of us brings to the table and uh, we have great communication and we're just all trying to push him to be the best player that he can be. Alright, man, dude, so everyone has high expectations and it seems like you have a strong backing behind you, which mm -hmm. most athletes don't just because you're good talent, talent will never beat hard work when it comes to the end of the day. So trust your family, trust your trainers, it's obviously working, or you wouldn't be up for Gatorade Player of the Year, Nate Dyke. The proof's in the pudding. So, like I said, man, it's been a great time talking to you. I can't wait to see look, in the next couple months. I'm gonna, I'm gonna interview again probably after the <laughs> right. season. Right, right. See what you're really looking for next summer, right before Florida State. So, mm -hmm. let's do it. Yes, sir. Get it done. Oh, yeah. All right. All right, gentlemen. Great. Thank you. No, thank, thank you, guys. That's real.